Okay, Captain Larry, I'm going to put the uh, Seafarer depth sounder back together. Here we are with the lens glued back in. Got the uh, rotor so it spins like it should. So now we're very going to very delicately uh, try to put this thing back in the cabinet. And come on. There she goes. So we're actually this is this is a landmark in the Captain Larry waving videos. We're using a tripod for the first time, 67 videos later, and uh, and here we are using a tripod. So to get this thing out, you have to tilt it back like this uh, and bring it out this way. You can't get this bolt out uh, while the circuit board is in there because of uh, this coil T2. Okay, so that's back in there. No big deal. Uh, we'll reassemble it. Uh, starting with these. These are what holds it in. These are just a standoffs with a threaded number six a stud on the end, a little lock washer. And uh, they screw right into the plastic. And that's what holds the circuit board in. And then uh, the other end is tapped for a screw and that's what holds uh, the back end. So we get the right size nut driver here and I'm going to get these all in loosely so that everything's all lined up and because uh, you're screwing into plastic see how I'm, I'm adjusting the position of the circuit board a little bit so that this thing will get in its hole. Um, thread it into uh, soft plastics not really made to come apart a lot of times so you want to get it started right and not cross threaded and you sure don't want to over tighten it so yeah, dump those out there so we can get to the lock washers more easily it's a little boring to watch, but uh, this is uh, the process. It seemed to be a little hard to get these uh, started into the threaded plastic. And, uh, just, oops, want to be careful and uh, not strip the uh, the plastic out because you really only got one chance with that and uh, the nut driver I can't really get my fingers in there and hold the stud straight so the nut driver lets me uh, hold it in the right alignment put just a little pressure on it and uh, get it started right so sure is great to have a right tool so when I first time I got paid for working on electronics I was a freshman in high school and I got a job in a TV repair shop back when they had those things uh, and I just did the dumb work uh, take the chassis out of the cabinet at that point uh, chassis are great big uh, metal things full of tubes and transformers and uh, in wooden cabinets for the most part sometimes a metal cabinet and uh, you know you got down on your hands and knees and uh, tried to take apart all these uh, uh, screws and nuts uh, that were holding the thing together. And I was down there trying to do it, you know, underneath this wooden cabinet with a wrench like this. And they took me aside one day and said, come on, we're going down to the parts store. And they said, you're going to buy yourself a set of nut drivers. And you're going to buy yourself some good screwdrivers. And a pair of needle nose and a pair of dykes. And uh, before that, I'd been working with the worst tools in the world. We didn't really have tools in my house. We had a pair of pliers and a hammer and bad screwdriver, and that was about it. And uh, I had a soldering gun that was too, too big for what I was trying to do. 
So uh, that was when I, you know, I was maybe I'm 13 or 14, freshman in high school, going in after after school to work for a couple hours for a dollar and a quarter an hour. And uh, luckily, these guys took me in hand and said, you know, you've got to get some some tools. And I, you know, this is 1960. I don't know, one or two we're talking about, and I bought a, a set of Exolite nut drivers just like this. This isn't that same set, but it's one just like it. And uh, that was the beginning of my learning what the right tools are to work on this stuff and uh, without mangling it up. You know, you can't... What I'm doing right here, you couldn't do with an open-end wrench. You'd be there all day and you'd be breaking things. Uh, you'd be breaking uh, the plastic, you'd be breaking the metal, you'd be chewing everything up. Uh, so it's either this or, you know, a socket set, an automotive socket set, uh, a small one, uh, would probably do this. This is a, a 916, it's 11 30 seconds. So if you had a thin wall 11 30 seconds quarter inch drive socket, maybe you could get it in here. Maybe. You can see, this doesn't want to start. Ah, what a pain. Ah, hard to get this started in that plastic. And if you don't start right, you're not going to have anything. So, this is, this is what it takes. So, whatever you're working on, 1971 or 2018, we've got to have the right mechanical tools and the right feel for them to, uh, to see how close the, uh, the clearance is between the case and the thing. I'm having to bend it out with my thumb in order to get this thing in here and I think despite my own best advice I may have chewed up the threads on this stud here because it I guess it's going to tighten up so I guess that's what we've got. <coughs> so there it is, back together again. And uh, let's get these parts back in here before we lose them. So what you didn't see when I took this apart was our little rubber uh, collars. These are actually just grommets. These are just plain old rubber grommets. And they put one over each shaft here. Uh, to help keep water from leaking in uh, past these knobs and then if you um, get the knob seated pretty firmly against better screwdriver against the uh, grommet uh, you get a fairly good uh, seal there. It's not going to be the greatest but uh, it's a uh, Certainly not waterproof in the way we can get waterproof electronics today, but um, it's uh, splash proof. Let's call it splash proof and uh, splash resistant. And that was the that was the idea. This pot arm does not have a flat on it, so. Try to figure out. How to position the knob. While I'm in here, I'm going to spray this sensitivity pot with a little cleaner. I don't know, it looks like a pretty hard pot to get into. But it, uh, I could see when I was turning it before, you could see a little noise on the neon bulb flash, so it meant the pot was 
dirty. So we'll do that and we'll spray this switch just a little bit just to get any grunge off it. And hook up the uh, made a little power cable. I use these ring terminals because um, they can't pull off. And uh, made these are clever little washers they put in here. And these were made so you could wrap a wire around there and this would capture the wire and help keep it from pulling off. But uh, the ring connectors are even better. So we'll use those. And, um, oopsie, get that slot oriented right in there. And, uh, boy, that looks uh, almost like uh, somebody knew what they were doing. Yeah, maybe they did and maybe they didn't. We'll, uh, we'll find out later. Well, we can't tighten that with a screwdriver, so we'll have to use a nut driver. Snug that down a little bit. Take the other one apart. Turn this around so you can see what's going on. What they did with this, this is really a 9 volt instrument. All the electronics and even the motor runs on 9 volts. And they've built in some little uh, dropping resistors in here to allow the thing to run on a variety of voltages. Uh, 12, 24, or 32. And you select those just by moving a negative wire over to the appropriate place. I noticed in here, hidden behind this, uh, these battery connectors, that it says battery 9 volts. So the original battery that was used in here was a little, uh, little lump battery, 9 volt battery. But today, um, a little, a little battery pack with, uh, uh, NICADs or or lithium uh, batteries that had uh, 9 volt to 9 or 9.6 volt uh, rating would uh, would work just swell. So this allows this thing to be used uh, in a dinghy with internal batteries, which is uh, a very cool thing and probably how I will end up using it if I get a transducer for it. All right, so now what we're going to do is just show that the thing works, and if I'm embarrassed here um, that's life now what do we do with our battery uh, move the battery over to the other workbench so a couple of little color coded clip leads here black for negative now let's just do it this way it's better Oops, straight on there. And uh, make sure this thing's turned off. And this thing, I think I'll turn off a little bit of this light so you can see the thing. Now there it is, and there she goes. Ha! When you have to slap it to make it start, that's not, uh, not a good sign. But there it is. Working away, uh, the battery voltage is not terribly high here. Oh, there we go. It's on the. When you go to times six, it goes from uh, 60 feet to 360, and the motor speed goes way down. So now we're not seeing any little flashes in here uh, from the dirty sensitivity control. And that's why it didn't want to start. It didn't want to start on the slow speed, I guess. And you can hear the thing. It's the the motor is actually, a, I think, a a DC motor. Uh, you can feel the magnetic poles as you as you rotate it, and then there's magnetic sensors inside there. So every time you turn it around, it's kind of going thunk 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 as it passes these magnetic. Uh, um, Holes. So you can see there the thing dimming and getting brighter, so the sensitivity is working. And uh, there we go. Oh, I don't have a load on this thing. I should have my little, I've got my resistance substitution box here. 
and I think it's prudent to uh, put a load on the output here. Um, we know that it's a it's a piezoelectric transducer, a crystal transducer, and those have a very high impedance, uh, probably at least 15,000 ohms, if not 100,000. So uh, I've got a 15,000 ohm resistor across here. I was running it that way before and I forgot it, but uh, now I've got it in there. And uh, so here we are. And uh, we're actually getting a I think it's much happier with a with a load on there. So that's what we've accomplished. The uh, uh, lens is glued back in there securely. Uh, the clearance for the rotor has been repaired so that it will rotate and we've got a flash in the zero position uh, right where we want it which uh, leads me to believe that if we get a transducer on here we'll probably get a ping and uh, it'll probably work. So that's uh, that's it for the uh, uh, Electronic Laboratories Limited uh, Seafarer Mark II Depth Sounder. Thanks for watching.